Washington City Council meeting for August 6, 2019. We'll begin the meeting like we do every meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. This evening, Councilman Overton is going to offer the invocation and Councilman Alexander is going to lead us in the pledge. If you'd stand with me, please. Thank you, Mayor. Bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity and the freedom we have to come as a city. And Lord, we ask you to lay a hand upon uh, our our folks in Ohio and, and Texas tonight as the families are grieving and, and such tragedy that they have. And Lord, we ask you tonight to help us um, make the decisions that's wise for this city. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Kittrell, if you would call the roll for us, please. Vice Mayor Camp. Present. Mr. Alexander. Present. Mr. Fan. Here. Mr. Fennell is absent. Mr. Hayes. Present. Ms. Love. Here. And Mr. Overton. Present. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. Next item is the approval of minutes. You have before you the July 2nd, 2019 meetings and the July 16th, 2019 meetings. Both. We have a motion to approve second. both sets with um, by Councilman Overton, a second by Councilman Alexander. Any corrections or changes? Very good. Seeing none, all in favor of approving both sets of minutes, please say hi. aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. They are approved. Next is the public re recognition on agenda-related items. This is the time of the meeting where people who are here who would like to speak to any item that's on this evening's agenda may come forward and do so. We ask that you introduce yourself. Give us your address and to limit your comments to five minutes, please. So public, re and I will mention too, for some of you who may be new here, there is public recognition at the end of the meeting where you can address items that are not on the agenda. But right now we're going to open public recognition on agenda related items and you may come forward at this time. Okay, seeing no one indicating that they wish to speak, I'll declare public recognition on agenda related items closed. Moving now to mayor's comments. I do have just a few things this evening. I want to certainly applaud um, the Fire on the Water volunteers, organizers, participants, and attendees because though I wasn't there, I have heard many rave reviews and many compliments. It was a very well done event, um, lots of positive feedback about it. Um, certainly we had a lot more attendees than we did last year. The music was again great. Um, everything went well. There were no issues with um, traffic or in the park or on the lake that we've made, been made aware of. And so we're just really pleased that the event has grown and it's gone very well and we look forward to discussing a third year very, very soon. Also just want to take a, a moment of personal privilege and say um, thank you for everybody supporting my nephew at the X Games. That's where I was last weekend. He did very well and he certainly felt the love from Gallatin and it was really cool to see ESPN saying from Gallatin, Tennessee. So I appreciate everyone's support on that. Um, on Fire on the Water, I certainly do want to mention Councilman Overton. I think he was out there for days helping with it. And um, Mr. Brown, the other department heads who participated, and certainly Jeff Henschel and Kim Baker, and all of the Gallatin Chamber of Commerce people, too. Um, don't want to not mention those names, and I'm sure there are others who probably are due mentioning. So my apologies and sincere thanks to you all. Uh, a couple of events coming up next Thursday is th Thursday on Main. The Wanna Beatles is performing. And on the 23rd of August is going to be James Fenton's birthday. And I think um, that is all under Mayor's comments, and we will move now to the regular agenda. The first item is second reading on Ordinance 01907-34, and Councilman Alexander is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is uh, Ordinance number 01907-34, uh, or waiving tap fees on behalf of Habitats for Humanity. Second reading, I so move. Second. Okay, motion by Councilman Alexander, second by Councilman Overton. Any discussion? <coughs> this is second reading on Ordinance 01907-34. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item two is second reading on Ordinance 01907-35. Councilman Hayes is recognized, and you do have an amended ordinance that was handed out relative to this. So. Yeah, this is an ordinance appropriating funds in the amount of $206,836 for installation of a traffic signal at Blue Jay Way in Nashville Pike. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. 
Motion by Councilman Hayes, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there anything that you want to we, share on this, Ms. Yeah, McCauley? We do have an amendment on this, and I think the amendment basically states that uh, Lowe's is going to provide the city a surety in the amount of 164000 to pay for the installation of the traffic signal. Um, and I think that will leave us a balance of, what, $42,836 that Correct. we will be paid. And question I have on that, Rosemary, is um, I think somebody else going to contribute some money to that also out of that 46000 that will reduce our amount. Uh, yeah, Rosemary Bates Economic Development Agency. Uh, James Fenton talked to the owner of the property and uh, he and his he felt certain that he and his partner would contribute ten thousand okay. uh, dollars that has not been sent to us yet but my understanding is that's the agreement okay which right. that would cut us down to thirty two thousand if they do that so Ms. McCauley? the only thing that i would add um, is that the payment from lowe's has not been received yet but we are expecting it at the end of this week or beginning of next week it's not a surety, it's actually a, a cash payment of 164000 Okay. Okay. It said surety on here. Well, well they previously had a surety. Okay. But it was required, I got you. Okay. Yes. So we're actually voting on... So we need a, a motion to amend. Yeah. So that's the motion to amend. That would amend. be your motion, then would yeah. be to yeah. amend. The second would be Councilman Overton, and so that would be the amendment. Let's vote on that first, then. So, uh, amendment is offered. All in favor say aye. aye. Uh, did we vote on that? Well, no. We vote on the amendment first. Nobody voted. Nobody all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. <laughs> I thought you were all looking at me like, why are you asking this? Um, so, the amendment is approved. Going back to the original motion, is there any further discussion on that? All right. This is second reading. Ordinance. 01907-35 as amended all in uh yeah i have a motion on the original all in favor say aye aye opposed say no oh he answered that question a few weeks ago and i don't remember the answer it's like six months to get it in. actually jr smith and finance talked to the contractor as we're processing the agreement and he said that the wait time for the mast arm poles right now is about 12 weeks, so it oh. could go a lot faster than we thought, or be a lot sooner than we thought. Well, that's good. That's good news. Thank you, Rosemary. Item three is second reading on ordinance 01907-36, Councilwoman Love. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance amending Gallatin Municipal Code, Chapter 11, Article 5, Peddlers, Solicitors, Transient Vendors, specifically including amendment of the curfew to dusk. I so move. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Love, Woman Love, second by Councilman Alexander. Is there any discussion? Questions? Okay, this is second reading on Ordinance 01907-36. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. It has passed unanimously. Item number four is Resolution R1908-31. Councilman Fan. Resolution awarding health, vision, and dental insurance contract for the City of Gallatin and payment of employee dental premium. I so move. Second. Motion by Councilman Fan, second by Councilwoman Love. Any discussion? Okay, this is Resolution R1908-31. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, say no. It is approved unanimously. Item five is Resolution R1908-32, Vice Mayor Camp. Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution awarding voluntary benefits, whole life, long-term care, cancer care, and critical illness with Iowa State Insurance. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilman, um, Vice Mayor Camp, second by Councilman Overton. Any discussion, questions? Okay, this is resolution R1908-32. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It is passed unanimously. Item six is resolution R1908-33, Councilman Overton. Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution awarding voluntary, no, this resolution confirming appointment of LK Lanham to resource start in Sumner County, Tennessee, and I so move. Second. Motion by Councilman Overton, second by Councilman Hayes. Any discussion? This is resolution R1908-33. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It is passed unanimously. 
And that concludes our regular agenda, bringing us now to other business. Um, I do have a couple of things, but I think you were trying to say something right before I started the agenda. Okay. All right. Was there any other other business from this council to come before tonight? Ms. Kittrell has a certificate of compliance for us. Mayor, this is a certificate of compliance for Copper Steel Liquor Store. This is a new owner, Daryl Robinson. Uh, he has met all the requirements for the city. We just need confirmation from this body. Motion approved. Motion by Councilman Overton. Second. Second by Councilman Hayes. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. It is approved unanimously. Anyone else? Okay, I have two items to share with you all. One is um, the city, um, particularly, well, the city and the count, the cities and the county are working on relooking at some of our urban growth boundaries. As you know, as you may or may not know, city of Galton is looking at possibly um, trading some land with um, the city of Hendersonville, and then there's some other urban growth boundary changes that need to be made throughout the county. Uh, Mr. McCord and the uh, planners from around the county have been working on that. The mayors have been working on that. They would it would obviously come to this body before we do anything. But um, to make this happen, we have to establish a coordinating committee. Actually, we don't have to establish it. The county has to establish it. And the mayors of all the cities sit on it. And then there's some other special appointments. Then one of the appointments is, has to be a representative from, it says a member of um, the largest municipally owned utility and so it could be anybody that's a customer or anything of our utility district but I was thinking it would be good to have Mr. Kellogg because he could actually speak to utility issues related to urban growth boundaries changing and so that's going to be my thought on that we don't have to make that decision tonight I just wanted to put it out there and you guys um, think about it and we discuss it and at some point and then um, the other thing that I wanted you all to know is that we did get notification from Mr. Isbell today that um, he's providing us with a certified tax rate. I'm going to put that on the work session for next week. We do have a very long meeting next week, but I want you to have the opportunity to ask questions. And if we are fine with it, we'll go ahead and move on to third reading at the next council meeting. If we're not, then we can put it off and discuss it more at the um, next work session. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with the rate he's given us. The thing that I do not know yet is how many um, potential appeals are going to the state. I'm going to try and find that information um, because, as you know, Gallatin could have a lot of very large businesses appealing at the state level, which could impact our revenue. So I want to learn that before I, I tell you I'm absolutely confident. So um, that's where we are. Oh, and it's 80 cents in, in case you're interested. I think that's it. Anyone else? All right, we'll move now to public recognition. Do you have something? Okay. Now we'll move to public recognition on non-agenda related items. You may come forward and speak at this time. If you have an item to speak to that you're not, that is not on the agenda. Um, again, give us your name and address, limit your comments to five minutes, and you may come forward at this time. Good evening. I'm Frank Marchese, M-A-R-C-H-E-S-E, -E, 589 Harris Lane. Um, I came to the council meeting in June to voice my concerns about the intersection, the island on Harris Lane and Long Hollow. I just, uh, again, uh, it was referred to the state, nothing has been done yet, but I did want to um, raise a couple more concerns about it. I have noticed that people do come down Harris Lane and make a left onto Long Hollow, where they're not supposed to. They don't go in the lane marked do not enter, but they go around that island and over that island to make a left back onto Long Hollow. Um, the, the barrier to the creek is continuing to get damaged by big trucks going through. And also, I was making a right onto Long Hollow the other day, and I just realized that because there was a car coming the other way, if you come west on Long Hollow, that's a passing lane. So as I'm turning on to Long Hollow, someone is coming around trying to pass somebody on Long Hollow into my lane. So it's a very, very dangerous intersection. Um, and I really think that this needs to be addressed sooner than later. There, there is gonna be something very wrong that happens there. 
Um, also, when I was here in June, I did mention my concerns about um, blasting damage to my home from Southern State doing the, um, the sewer work there. I did make a, I have four complaints into the state. I just want to let you know. They have an open investigation on it. No one from the state has contacted me yet about it. They won't comment on an ongoing investigation. But my home continues to shift, and you can tell because doors are, can't close anymore where they used to close. I've only been in the house three months, and I already have to replace the math, master bathroom shower because it shifted, and now it's leaking. And uh, I just want to let you know what I'm going through with the state. I, I believe as, as um, leaders of this town, of this city, you, you all should know what I'm going through with them. It's not an easy process dealing with the state, and uh, they don't give you any information, but I, I am making an attempt. Mm -hmm. and, and sir, do you live in a new construction house? No, sir. Okay. I live on the only house on that part of Harris Lane. Liberty Creek is going in right next to me between myself and the um, Romanian church there. Okay. So I'm that single house on that okay. length of Harris Lane. I would, uh, uh, Yes, I would like to ask you to connect with our fire marshal. I and have. You have? Yes, ma'am. She is aware. Okay, very good. And then, Buck, will you raise your hand? Because that's Buck Dozier in our engineering department. I do want engineering to check on that particular. What did I say? <laughs> Where did I come up with that? <laughs> wow. I don't even know the man that called him. Um, Buck Rogers. Um, um, I would like us to look at Long Hollow because that does sound like it should probably be a double yellow line. There was a meeting that happened there this afternoon. Oh, okay. There was a meeting this afternoon. So very hopefully good. we can at least help with that issue. Yes. So Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our pleasure. Good evening, people. In Gallatin, in City Council, my name is Patrick Readers for 317 Malone Drive. And to, just a little bit to comment to y'all about what the other guy just commented about. It seems like all these departments created an investigation so they don't got to give any information about it. And I'm going to talk about one right now. Uh, I have a. About the state, by the way, not other states. Well, regardless, okay. agencies. Okay. okay. The, the one I'm talking about is about you guys. Okay. Okay, I got a supplemental report 1806. 214 from the Gallatin Police Department that allegedly this isn't supposed to be public information because it involves a death. But two news companies and me asked for the information, I don't get it, but yet Gallatin News gets it. So I figured I'd share it with the public tonight and you guys as well. It says on Saturday, December 15th of 2018, at approximately 1.40, I received a phone call from Ricky Troop advising me that patrol blank, 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 blank. I notified Assistant Chief Searles, Chief Bandy, about the incident and responded to the scene. I remained on the scene, blank, 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 blank. Through the course of the investigation, a video was obtained from blank in a hotel, blank. The guest register was also obtained from the hotel. A review from the video, blank, 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 blank. On Tuesday, December 18th, Lieutenant Troop came into my office that morning and told me his name was on the register at the hotel, blank, blank, blank for the night of December 15th, the night that the woman died behind the school board building. He said his brother was separated from his wife and he had to rent a room at the hotel for his brother. He said he went to the hotel about 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. and rented the room and waited for his brother who never arrived. He advised that he left the room approximately at 10.15 and arrived, and, uh, arrived home. I advised Assistant Chief Sorrells and Chief Bandy of this information a couple hours later was advised that Lieutenant Ballard and Lieutenant Troop had brought him two sheets of paper. One sheet, the register from the hotel with his name on it, another sheet was the register from his hotel, did not have his name on it. Lieutenant Troop was questioned about the two different papers and the next day submitted his resignation. Captain Kate Novinsky, 302, with her initials on December 20th. Another report, on December 17th, while returning to the police department, I received a phone call from Ricky Troop. Troop had uh, followed me to recover a stolen trailer in Trialsdale County area. During the phone call, Troop stated he rented a hotel for his brother at blank on December 14th. 
blank, blank, Troop stated. He was going on, he's going to be on the video for the tenant list. Here's my problem. This might has started from a death investigation, but falsifying or possibly falsifying a police investigation isn't a death investigation. And it's covered up. Just like when I was arrested in April 2014 for chalking on the sidewalk here that I got permission to do. I got permission on the phone, it's recorded, that I could chalk as long as it's not obscenities and vulgarities. And I chalk fluoride's poison, fluoride's murder, and they try to get the, the, the fire department to clean it up and say it's a whole big bill. The system that we have in place is supposed to be love and unity, not creating an investigation to hide your information. It's all of our information. Okay? So the way I look at it here, the people don't know in 2012 in July, Ricky pulled a gun on a coworker, pulled the trigger, and Chief Bandy's telling him, I love you like a brother. I'm going to give you 10 days suspension, and I'm going to include the weekend in it for three felonies. It's ridiculous. And then he outs a snitch on Facebook. I mean, we need some trust from you people. You guys are supposed to be our support and our leaders for our town and, 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 and the pinnacle for the support of our town. Not creating investigations to cover stuff up. I mean, if you ain't done nothing wrong, I mean, I know you're a good girl, Paige. I already know. But we got to do something about this. It ain't right. Have a good night. Anyone else wishing to speak under public recognition this I'm, evening? I'm working on my show. Anyone else? All right. Seeing no one, public recognition on non-agenda related items is closed. And with that, we'll entertain a motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Overton. Not council, not council meeting. Second by Councilman Alexander? Yes. All right. All in favor say aye. We are opposed. <laughs> uh, we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>